The first way we did it, and I'll show you a couple of different places I've been. I've got some film from when I was at Mortimer Jordan. And then when I came here to Coleman, Mortimer Jordan's a school down the road in Jefferson County, close to Birmingham. We would run this set right here. This is our blue set. And we would run the jet sweep off of it, of course. So we would motion this. Of course, this is our X. You can call it. This is what I call them. Um, we put our fullback here. That would be our fullback. And our tailback's right here. And then we have our Z, which is our other wing. And then this is our true X. And, of course, we have our Y right here tied in. And uh, we run a lot of jet sweep and the buck off of it. So we would uh, – I don't have as many clips of those, but I thought this is good to see. Um, we just bring this guy in motion. We, you know, we jet, jet, jet. And when I came in, the, the, I was the offensive line coach, and I said, well, Coach, why don't we run the buck sweep off of that too? And so – he did the guy we were double slot option and did a little bit of gun stuff but anyway we got to sort of collaborate on this one came up with a pretty good scheme here and same deal more than jordan we didn't have great players we we worked really hard and our kids worked really hard and we had a few players anyway we'll go into some clips and you can see this is in the quarterfinals in 2018 when i was at Mortimer jordan before i came here now if you'll see this is our wing and you smaller school guys and this is what what we did there we were a 5a and we didn't have a you know, ninth through 12th, we might have dressed a lot of kids, but there wasn't a lot of kids ready to play. So what we did is we'd have sets like you can look. We got in this set. This is our starting outside linebacker, Sam. This was our start, one of our defensive tackles, and this is one of our defensive ends. You small school guys looking for body types, get your more athletic guys that can block. And so we sort of morphed it at Coleman. I, I made this more of a – I had guys that could line it like a true fullback that I could put there, but we'll get to that in a second. But you can see – you know, it's the typical buck sweep. We're blocking everything down. Uh, this is against Jasper in the quarterfinals, like I said, in 2018. And it's a driving rainstorm, and they're a spread team. And we, I think we threw it five or six handful of times and just ran it. We beat them 41 to 14 and uh, really had no business beating them. They had a lot better players than us, but felt like we wore them down. But you can see we're going to fake that. Guard pulling, boom, right there. And like I say, these guys, you, you know, if you're a smaller school guy, Watching this, you know, like I said, we got one, two. There's three guys for sure. We're 5A, but they're playing both ways. That's There's three starters on defense that flip around and play on offense when we get in certain personnel packages. And what was bad is I never got to work with these guys. Like four here, he's down block. And like I said, I'm going to talk. You know, sometimes I may, I may talk about something that you completely know 100% about, but this is what I like to go through. The key to all – the buck sweep is the down block. Some people call them fold blocks. Or I call it down block. You've got to get your head in front of his crotch with a tight end and the tackle, and you've got to take your backside hand, which are this – your right hand. You've got to drive that into that guy's hip and move your feet. Now, four here, I never got him an offensive individual ever. I just got him in team stuff in practice. So he's not real good at it. Every once in a while, I'd get 36. And they, these guys were – you know, they were, this guy's about 230. This guy's about – 210. They're not overly big. Now, we were really big up front this year. Our guards were real athletic, but our two tackles, our center, were big guys. And um, another thing we that I recommend doing, if you're going to do this, is take everybody you have on the team that could possibly run the ball, and you do a buck drill every day. And what I would do is um, I would put a cone down, you know, right here where that L cut would be. And the offense coordinator, what he would do, he would send me the linemen and all the running backs and the backup quarterback. Well, they were doing seven on seven, and we would do butt drill, butt drill, butt drill, butt drill. And we would just – we would work on making that cut every day. And you can see our guys got really good at it by the end of the year. Like I said, this is the 13th game of the year. And so we got really good at it. And uh, I, if, if you're going to do this, if you're not already – if you're already doing it, hey, you know, this is just what we had to do to be good at it. And uh, – like I say, I'm just going to show you. I'm the type of guy I learn from watching film. Um, I've never done a Zoom till this morning, so I guess this is the second time. I'm not a te I'm not a technology guy. I should have grew up in the '60s or '70s. <laughs> I'm not good at this stuff at all. And so, um, like I say, we're just going. I'm going to show film and talk through what could have done better, what was good. Um, we had two really good guards this year that were, they weren't very big. They're both about 200 pounds. They can move pretty good. You can see 50. 53 does a good job, and this is where we struggled here our first year when I got to Coleman was getting that guy that could turn up in that hole and feel like that. Our guard's too high right there, but does a pretty good job kicking, good cut. You can see our wing tight. 36 does a great job blocking on the inside linebacker.
here's it going the other way. You know, we're going just that jet action. You'd be surprised. Just that jet action. See what happens is watch this safety or this corner. So they're man. They're playing straight man. He's leaving. We're getting them outnumbered. That's why I like a lot of eye candy in there. And guys don't look like much. That's six yards of whack. It's pouring rain in the quarterfinals of the playoffs. All right, now this is the set. When I got here, I went to more because the people were playing with class man. We'd get two on two over here. We had a whole another throwing game. That could be another talk some other time. But uh, we had what will happen, you line up in this – I'm not a big R. I haven't got into RPOs as much out of it. We're going to start doing it more, but uh, your RPO game could be really strong out of this combo routes over here. But you can see here they get you know they're giving us a bare front trying to stop us, and you know it makes it easy right here is a stay call. Now if the well, I, I differentiate my guys then I don't now, but when I was at this particular school we had a tight guard and a split guard. And so the tight guard always went to the strong side, the split guard. And what I did, I personnelled it. And if you're at a smaller school, to me, it's easier because I had a tight tackle. All he ever did was block down. You know, I had, my tight end was with a tight tackle. Tight guard always kicked out. You, know, you got your center. My split guard was always the guy that wrapped, always pulled up in the hole and wrapped. And so, um, and then my split tackle was usually a more athletic guy for scoops. And just, you know, we run a lot more veer his way, you know, you know veer release. But anyway, on stay call, what that is is the tight guard yells, you know, stay, stay, stay. It's because it's so tight in there, he can't pull. Like I said, the nose guard shaded. When the nose guard shades to the A gap, and I'm sorry, this this particular year, I don't have any end zone shots. I will when I get to my call and stuff. But um, stay call means he's blocking down. The backside guard turns into the kick guy because what winds up happening is I've got a we got a tight end that can block here and a wing that can block this guy. You know, and if they do it a whole lot, we won't necessarily do it. Of course, you can see number four here. He he didn't like playing offense, and it shows. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard to convince guy. Like he's supposed to be going to that guy. He's supposed to go on the snap. We got angles where it ought to be thirty six to him, four to him. But luckily, my number seventy here was a really good football player. He was real athletic and fast, and he actually gets enough to push him over, but not enough. But there again, that's still four or five yards. You know. The biggest thing I've seen with this offense when you go in somewhere is um, we didn't have as much trouble with the buy-in because they were three and seven the year before we got here. Now, we just went six and six our first year, but they'd never won a playoff game in 6A. And like I said, they'd come off that that bad year before. And so the kids, when we got here, this school, well, the school after fixing show you when we get in the next set of plays, um, they were really – they just wanted to win football games. They didn't care how we had to do it. They just wanted to win – and that's what you got to be wary of when you go in. To me, anything that's not spread, throw it every down. And this day and time is the buy-in. And um, we went to more of a triple option base this year, and that's been harder just because the kids got used to the other. But like I said, it's their first year. Now, now I'm going to tell you, like 22 right here, he runs a 4-8-40. He's not very good. I mean, he's, he was a good high school football player. He went to Birmingham Southern, which is a D3 school, and played. And uh, – but you can see, I mean, that's that team right there is a lot more athletic than us. But this was our equalizer. You see, good job. Um, you know, I, they don't look like much, guys, but we're we're slowly by the fourth quarter. It was 14 to 14 at halftime. We went up beating them 41 to 14. But what I like is you train your kids, like just watch 36 right here. He's this wing back right here. He's like so he's starting defensive tackle. And he's blocking that linebacker. You watch him till the play's over. If you can get kids to play like this, you're going to be pretty good. You know, to me, that's not dirty. That's just the whistle, the whistle blew right there. He stopped blocking that guy when he got to out of bounds. If you can get guys to block to the echo of the whistle, you're going to be pretty good. And actually, they got a flag for slinging him down out of bounds. All right, this is the influence trap. I don't have any film because this is new. I guess I'm giving you something we haven't even done yet, but I think it's going to be pretty good for us. And uh, you start with the same eye candy, you jet it, jet it across. And this is something you got to spend time on. You got to rep this to get 
but you run you you fake that jet, fake that butt. The wing arcs around. And I draw everything into uh, this is the defense we get. I don't care if they're a three four. I don't care if they're a four three split four four two five. When we play people, they're going to give us a nose, two four eyes, and two hard outside linebackers walked up like defensive ends. It don't matter. They're going to play. They're going to either play man or they're going to play two free, and these guys are going to rotate with the motion. And so what what we get is every time as we – if any of y'all came to my um, – we talked about the mid-triple this morning. If you get a chance to look at that, that's good because the mid-triple messes with those those uh, near-read safeties where they're rolling back and forth. <clears throat> and so all you do, man, is you – here's two last guys you got to block the way I look at it. This safety is going to run himself over. The back is going to come out here. He's cutting off the corner. Front side guard is going to pull and kick the nine technique. Center is going to step, play side, try to cut him off. This is this is one of those deals where you got to really be able to block the nose. If you've got a nose that's just unblockable, then the GF's better because he's going to overplay the buck. If you got an average nose at your center or you got a really good center that can handle stuff, single block him. And then what you're going to do – his backside guard is going to trap the three. Tackle is going to backside backer. Tight end is going to play side backer. And that quarterback is going to ride that buck across, and he should rub hips almost right through here with that tight end. And that safety's over here. He's and my, my thing, you know, I don't worry about safeties as much. If they're 10 yards downfield, and most of the time people we play, their safeties and secondary guys are cover guys. And so they're um, they're not. I don't I don't stress about them as much. And so you know if we can get by those guys, we can get by anybody. And so I we I don't have any film to show, but this is this is a new thing for us that uh, we're going to uh, we're going to try we're going to do next year. We're going to do this more next year. Coaches, I really hope you got some great information from that YouTube video. Again, hit the subscribe and like button down below. It gives us valuable data, and you also get notified when I upload new content to this channel. Thanks for watching, coaches.